When is it? When I turn the camera on, they stop doing the cute things. Hey, Turbs. Say hi. You don't, don't feel like it? That's fine. We're gonna guess where I am. Look, there's so many plants and a random elderly man strolling diagonally across this giant parking lot. Uh, I'm at Lowe's. I just need a light switch because I got a ceiling fan. But I noticed lots of plants. Figured I'd turn the camera on. Maybe I'll get some footage of what's going on in there. You no, know, because I've got it. The turbo with me. He's such a sweetheart. I love him so much, but I don't know <laughs> how much I'm going to be able to film in there. I don't know how much I'll be able to film in there with him. Clean your lens to get a clear. I hate when it says that. It's so condescending. It was just getting strapped up here. Got to have the treats ready for the dog. You have to wait. I'm going to be mortified if you pee on anything or stick your nose someplace it doesn't belong. It is surprisingly crowded in here. Turbo, let's go over here and walk around the grass for a minute. Burn off some energy. I know some people have issues with pinch collars. It's just a safety thing. He's 106 pounds and I got a bad shoulder. It's just in case she hits the fan. Something a little bit extra to hold on to him with. Doesn't really get used. He just left three weeks of training Monday through Friday, eight to four, every single day with a trainer who's a big advocate on the pinch with a big dog. He didn't use it on him, but he was being trained with the service dogs who also had the pinches. Just supposed to know what you're doing with them. You're not supposed to be walking ahead of me. Turbo, heel. Good heel, good boy, come on, let's go. Lots of things to smell, ooh. Oscar, Sam, and Diane. I have my sunglasses on, so I may end up saying ooh to a lot of things that I think look nice and then take my sunglasses off or edit the video and go, hey, I'm not crazy about that. You're supposed to pull? I don't think so. Turbo, sit. Good sit. Good boy. He's being so good. I got a new lamp. Where is it? Here it is. That one. This one. Right there. I really like it, but I can't hook it up to a switch that has a dimmer on it. I already mentioned that, I need to find a switch. Look at these beautiful primrose, Bellarina cobalt blue. Flowers are a little weathered, but that's a nice color. It's a double flower. Don't get as much color in the center, but that's still looking really nice. And they have the oak leaf over here, it's a smaller leaf, higher flowers, smaller petals. Abundant blooms. I like those and some crests. These are luminous. Those are actually, I really, I like those a lot. Ballerina pink ice. These are cool. The white and kind of a light lavender metal. More dianthus. Silver pink. I do like a dianthus with a nice silvery foliage. Those look good. Everything, I can't, there's too much. Only been a few days since the last time I was here and they have really, really, really stocked up. Yes, I'm getting the crests. These are some. Nice looking Encore Azaleas. Those make good bonsais. I might poke through those and see if any of them have a good shape to them. They got hydrangeas out already. Dear Dolores. It's a fun name. Any kind of fun description to go with? Turpo. Macrophylla. Repeat blooms. I'm sure that that was probably a really neat hydrangea, but his face was right in there. I didn't want to let him do any damage. Dr. Ripple. Ripple? 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 Hmm? Already in flower. Nice early blooming clematis. I like that. Those had really nice flowers on them. Nice big primulas. I think I saw those before. I see some small ones down here. I'll probably grab some of those. <laughs> some columbine. You have to be gentle with the plants, Turbo, okay? Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Nice and gentle. And some English daisies. Bam bams. These are fun. I like those. They always. I, I water too much. I always kill those. Always kill them. My hand's way too heavy with watering. And lots and lots of Lewisias. Some of my favorites. I know I had said I don't have enough sun for these anymore, but I might in a couple of spots. Maybe, eh, probably not. The spots where I have enough light for them, the ground is pretty wet. I just don't see it going well. And uh, lots of prim, they're all blue though. I'm not like, blue looks cool, but it's not, not my vibe, not my jam. There's one pink, one red, one yellow. I was hoping for a little bit more to, well it's good to see them anyways so 1698 for what looks like four plants in a pot or like 458 a piece down there so i guess this is a little bit cheaper but i don't primulas they don't divide all that well so i don't think that's 
going to work out for what I wanted. They look so nice though, such happy cherry plants, some primulas and some Gerbera daisies, wasn't that? Did I say Derbera? Gerber, Gerbera. I always have to say it all the different ways, otherwise people get mad at me. Depends on where you live. I'll just, I'll get one. I've been surprised by the amount of impatience and begonias, and even petunias I've been seeing out. Petunias I can understand a little bit more, but these, those things are toast if we have a frost, which we probably will. And geraniums that aren't some Martha Washington. That's normally the only thing you see out here this time of year. Or Martha, oh, and dahlias. What? Those aren't supposed to be out yet. See? A good amount of summer annuals. Not normally out this time of year. They usually come out a little bit too early, and then there's some damage to them, but this is way too early. I'm sorry, am I boring you, Turbo? Plenty of Gerber daisies, too, but none that I really like. That's fine. It's still fun to look at the plants. Don't always have to buy them. Okay, he has been incredibly patient and well-behaved, and... Uh, a lot of people have been stopping to talk to him, which has been fun. I'm going to get what I want, and then we can head home and do some plant stuff. Was that fun, Turbo? It currently smells like flowers, Labrador, and french fries in the car, because there's a fast food place over there. I'm over at Home Depot now. I don't... Can he come... Are dogs allowed? They finally have the gates open. I want to see what's going on in there, but I don't... It's, it's only... It's 47 degrees. He's fine to stay in the car with the windows cracked. I just... Ugh, I don't know. I think it should be fine. Uh, uh, what are you doing? You're supposed to sit. Oh, turbo. Come on out. Now get back in. Come on. You gotta do this the right way. Get in. Good sit. Okay. Okay. Good boy. Come on out. Look at all the ranunculus. Those are nice too. 10% off when you buy 10 or more of any combat. Oh, <laughs> challenge accepted. And there's a cart right here. That's perfect. It's a flatbed, but that'll. Hey, turbo, climb. Good boy. Stay there. Yeah, well, this is this is pretty much the end of it. Not a ton to look at in here other than just some trees and shrubs. The bulb pots are looking pretty cool though. Very full. Lots of color. Some lupins, lupines over here. I do not have luck with those. It gets either too hot or it's too cold or it gets too wet. Too bad because they are beautiful flowers. That was some, what is with the lens cap? Always forgetting about the lens cap. He had <laughs> Good boy. Okay, yeah, just sit down. Have a seat. Good boy. That was good. Was so good in there. Oh, love. Thank you. Thank you, Turbo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pooped. You done? You done, Turbo? Time for naps? Yeah, that was a lot for you. He was so good. My mind is blown. Night and day difference between the last time I had him out at Lowe's and this time. I mean, not night and day. He was good last time, but this was just phenomenal. He was great with everybody. The people who worked there were giving him treats, and even they were having him sit and listen which is great that's what i want when he's out in the world make sure he's listening and not out of control which he wasn't at all he's just perfect i do i need to clear i'm at home don't need to clarify that right i think in the last clip i said i was going to be coming home and working on a basket i'm not entirely sure i think i did mountains up and going keeping the water clear that's mostly there actually to keep the birds from pooping in the pool there's a bird out here called grackle the grackle birds, little blackbirds, they bag their poop up and they drop it in the water. It's disgusting. I'm not a fan of those birds. Hence the fountain. I mean, they're cool, like nature, and I respect them. You know, blah, 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 all that stuff. But no, also, like, just don't, don't sh** in my pool. You can finally make a basket. This is something I've been talking about for quite a while that I've wanted to do. I just haven't had the available plants. The nurseries have slowly been getting them in. As y'all saw, there are a lot to choose from. I am pretty sure my eyes are bigger than my planter as usual, but I'm gonna see what I can do to make it work. This is a 16 inch faux wicker basket. I usually use the coconut baskets, the coconut liner ones, and then put a layer of plastic down on the inside just to slow down how quickly those dry out. But last year, even with the plastic liner, they were drying out so fast. The last spring, the air was unusually dry, and I just figured that might be a situation again this year. So that's why I decided to just go with a plastic container. And I thought this one looks nice enough too that if for some reason I need to take it down and set it someplace if we have an unexpected cold, like something below like 25, then I can just pull it down and set it someplace and it'll look nice. Those coconut ones in the wire, they tend to wobble and get knocked over. This just seemed like a good way to go. And it has the, here's the, the dangly bits. Came with the chain and I popped a few holes in the bottom at random, as you can see. Don't know why I didn't put one there, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. There's going to be plenty of drainage in there. And everything I've picked up for this basket is fragrant. 
and colorful. And that's all I want. Colorful, fragrant, and abundant bloomers. I hang this basket right outside my kitchen window, which I normally have cracks during the morning so the cats can sit and watch everything that's going on outdoors. So it's nice to have plants around that have a good sweet fragrance that blows into the house. And it's just nice when you step out the door to have that waft of flower smell right in your face when you step outside. I suppose I should probably put some soil on this. I'm gonna plant it up. There we go. All-purpose potting mix, nothing special there. This is a blend that is holding on to more moisture than I would like. So it's a bag that I'm trying to get rid of to figure a short season basket, probably a good use for that. It's a, it's an espoma, just a espoma potting mix, but the particular batch is just really heavy. It's going to hold on to more moisture than I would want for a lot of my containers. This is probably a good use for it in a hanging basket that's going to dry out more quickly. Even though it is plastic, it's still gonna be up there in the air. You know, hanging baskets, they tend to just be the ones that we don't water as often as we really should, right? Seemed like a good fit to use one that holds on to more moisture. In the middle, doing a dianthus, which I'll probably regret in the long run. Dianthus, when we get the stormy seasons going, since they're not established plants, they tend to splay out. You can even already sort of see it happening over here from where I watered it earlier. And I was using the Gecko watering wand, which has a very gentle stream on it, but that's all it took. I will probably be cutting those off. I love the silvery blue foliage on there. I think I showed this one when I was at the store. Pretty sure. Super Trooper Silver Pink Dianthus. Nice pink flowers. There's some splashes of red. Mostly that silvery blue foliage that I like makes them stand out. It should be perennial. I didn't. It says perennial. I didn't look at the tag, but I, these are usually good to zone six and five. Yeah. So this would be good in zone six. That can go in the ground someplace warm. <laughs> Not necessarily warm a drier spot in the garden, at least once it's established. Well-drained soil, that's what I was trying to get to. The breeze, there's just a gentle breeze and there's a waft of everything over here right in my face, it smells so good. And then to go around this, I have cress. Lots of cress, which I'm sure y'all have been able to see. Rock on purple, rock cress. This stuff, great ground cover, especially for a rock garden, a drier spot in the garden. Both of these plants are not ones that are going to do well in my garden, but I have a family member who has a front yard with no irrigation that I think these will do wonderfully in. So I will be sticking them with all of these when I'm done with them. Getting them out of these containers without destroying them might be a bit of a challenge. I should probably take this somewhere else and do it. Pop one in right here. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a tight fit. It's gonna be worth it. It turns, drop another one in. Right, I think right around here should be good. Hopefully get that in without messing up the dianthus. Did I say dianthinus? Dianthus. And the last one right down in here. Oh yeah, tight fit. Very, very snug. Might have to prune out the edges on this one some because the dianthus if they don't have airflow in the middle, they can rot when temperatures get warmer. Although when temperatures get warmer, I don't really plan on having this put together. It's a very short term, temporary arrangement. Man, that looks so good. That looks so nice. I love those colors together. Now, I have some White Knight Alyssum as a trailer. I was gonna use Creeping Jenny, but the only Creeping Jenny I've been able to find is the Goldilocks yellow stuff, which I don't care for. I think that green would look better in here. I don't want the yellow foliage mix in with this and just that that's nice too right doesn't that look good i'm wondering i have three extra tete-a-tete daffodils should i i think i'm gonna try squeezing everything else in here why not try and get a little bit more spring color in here i think the yellow will really fit nicely with the pink the purple and the white it might not leave enough room to get the alyssum in there hmm well don't know until we try i bet that if i work the roots enough on the alyssum, I'll be able to get it all in there. You might have to tear some roots up, but that's okay. That one in here. Yep, liking that, that looks good. Yeah, I could, I could say that I'm done right now and just fill it in because this is phenomenal. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous color combination for the springtime. But I think, I feel like I just, I have, yep, that I have to. You tell that I'm really into the planting. I've missed doing it. I can't even seem to finish my sentences. Every opportunity I have to just get my hands dirty 
and get things planted up. That's all I want to do right now. I brought a cardboard box out here to set everything inside of so I could do this without making a gigantic mess. Then I ended up doing 95% of the planter with the cardboard box sitting on the ground right next to me. If these are heavily rooted in the containers, I'm not going to pull away at the roots. With annuals, I don't really worry about tearing up their roots because they tend to reestablish very quickly. Yeah, there's not a lot going on in there. If I were to pull on this right here and remove that part, it's not going to throw things off very much for the plant. As long as it's not really hot outside, which it isn't, I can probably though, maybe I can work, eh, eh. It'd be easier just to pull that off. Then gently set that in there. <sighs> that looks good. This looks good. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna come back and talk about it some more. I don't know if there's much more to say though. I've been talking throughout the whole process here. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yep, yep. I absolutely love this. That is a stunning arrangement of plants. It does, I think, look better from up above, doesn't it? You can see how it, everything's got that nice color blocking to it, just more uniform. Things will have to straighten out over time and fill out. That's not going to be something where there will be a lot of it going on. Not going to be a ton of filling out going on with this basket. This is a short season basket. As soon as temperatures here hit, where there will be nighttime temperatures, I'd say over 60 and daytime temperatures are steadily in the 80s. This thing's coming apart. The, uh, well, everything in here except for the lobulaire are all perennials here in zone six. So like I mentioned, those will be going to my sister's garden, assuming she wants them. If she doesn't want them, I'll just sneak over and stick them in her garden when she's not home. Nice drought tolerant plants that don't need much maintenance. The lobulaire is nothing drought tolerant about those but those I can hold on to and use in other arrangements, or maybe she'll want them for something else as well. Perennials all around the dianthus, you don't have to deadhead it, but you're going to have much better blooming, continuous blooming. You get the old flowers out of there. The uh, rock crest, I, that would be a nightmare. I wouldn't bother with that. And I know I keep referring to things as drought tolerant, which can throw people off and make it come across as if something doesn't need to be watered. That's not the case here, especially in a basket. Oftentimes rock garden just means that they really like a nice well-drained soil. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are drought tolerant. It should, because that's what it lends most people to think. The crest that's in, the rock crest is fairly drought tolerant once it's established, particularly during cooler seasons. During the heat of the summer, sometimes I have noticed some dieback and they can start to look somewhat sparse and have some patches in them, but generally just give them a little cut back, keep them well watered when the sun's not on the plants and they'll be just fine. These only get six to eight inches high and six to eight inches wide. So these are almost mature. These won't spread too terribly much, at least that's according to Monrovia on this particular one. I'm pretty sure I've seen the rock crest spread and fill in some pretty big areas, but I could just be mixing that up in my mind with the ground cover flocks because they have a somewhat similar appearance to them as far as just that carpet of really colorful, nice looking flowers. That one is hardy to zone five. The tete -tet daffodils and the dianthus up top should be good for zone six. Let me know about the tete tets if you're growing them in zone five. I only know that they're hardy in zone six because I've been growing them in zone six. With bulbs, sometimes you get really really random useless information when it comes to their hardiness because of the tendency to want to lift them and bring them inside which can make it so that whoever's selling them might list them as being hardy to like zone two because you don't have to worry about the cold you're bringing it inside i would imagine those would be good in zone five and again the white knight lobularia that one is an annual here I don't know the difference between this one and the Snow Princess. I, it says that this one has spacing of 18 inches, so that should mean that it has a trail, a spread of 18 inches. So I think that that would make it a little bit smaller than the Snow Princess. I think Snow Princess can go 24 inches, right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. It looks nice, has a lot of texture to it. That will start to come down the sides of the container. I don't expect anything else in here to really do any growing over the next several weeks. Would be unlikely. In fact, the crest will probably go out of flower here in a couple of weeks. I'd be surprised if it continues to put out much more flowers on it, the rock crest. That is, the tete -tets have some buds left in them, but not much. They're about done. Those will still have a nice grassy texture to add to the planter. And the only thing in here that I think should keep blooming for a few more weeks would be the lobularia and the dianthus. Like, this is short season. This is just, just to get by for a few weeks. Probably around mid-May, I'll be putting together a summer basket. Maybe earlier than that. It just depends on 
what the nurseries have available and what I find that I like and really how well this holds up. If we have some extreme heat spells and there are temperatures that are drastically warm in the 80s for days on end, then uh, this may not hold up that well just with the drier air, but we will see. If we have some extreme heat roll through, then I may have to pull it down. Things get pretty hot in that spot where I'm going to be putting it. So the nice thing about this basket is I can just take it and set it down like a pot. I'll get the chain put on here and get that hung up. Probably, I might wait a couple of days though, because low tonight's like 29 or 30. I figure I may as well just wait to hang it up as much as I would love to be able to look out the window and see it. Probably smart to just keep it down low on the ground where I can throw the frost blanket over it like I've been doing with everything else out here for the last couple of weeks, really. The chilly spring, winter of March was pretty nice. Early March, that was fantastic, but then it turned to spring and it's just no, it's been rather chilly. There is one problem that I may encounter here. I think I mentioned this before. Dianthus, not always the best plant to have, like just surrounded and being strangled by other plants. They tend to rot out in the middle when that happens, particularly if things get warm. So that could be an issue. I doubt it since it's not going to be together for more than like probably five to six weeks, but if it is, then it's it's all right. The plant itself will be okay. I can lift it out, give it a cut back. Once it goes in the ground, it should rebound and be just fine. I love how this looks. Nothing in here for foliar interest. I usually like to have something with some big bulb leaves or some kind of textured leaf like the Artemisias, ivy, something of the sort. Those are really the only things I see around the springtime, ivy and vinca and then the creeping jenny. But you get, I just think that that yellow leaf coming down the edge of the pot, it, I wouldn't have liked how that was going to look. It would need to be deep green. I know there's yellow here in the daffodils, so you wouldn't think that would bother me, but I just know that it would have. I'd rather have a lot of flowers in here because that's the thing that's missing in the springtime. There's just not a lot of flowers, not yet. I have some things that are going, the peach trees just started to bloom, but the magnolias won't be blooming here for a little bit longer. The red buds haven't started doing anything yet. Everything is just behind this year and early at the same time because a lot of plants that bloom in March and April were blooming back in February. It's been a weird year. I'm just saying, whole point, I just wanted color. I wasn't all that concerned about getting leaf texture in here. Just wanted a lot of color and color is <laughs> what I got. This looks fantastic. I love those colors together. Smells absolutely amazing. I did pick up some ranunculus when I was at the Home Depot. Isn't it beautiful? Grabbed a flat of that. I have other plants for the ranunculus, but I thought I'd bring one over just so you could see it. The rest are sitting on the ground so you can get covered with the frost cloth tonight. And that is it. I had mentioned in the last vlog, tropical plants coming in the mail. Some of them came, some of them are back ordered and they'll be here in a few days. And I don't want to start going into a whole nother separate thing in this video and then have to wait a couple more days for something to get here and patch it all together. This has been fun. Got to go shopping, got to put a basket together, had some turbo time, which was nice because he hasn't been in the videos for a while because he was off at school. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I'm good with this. Seems like a good stopping place. Might make the video a little bit shorter, shorter, shorter than normal, but that's all right. Got distracted by the dog. He found a very big stick. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Some things going on yet? That ranunculus is really pretty. I thought about putting it in the center, but I'd figured between the two, the dianthus would be a better choice because I like the icy blue, kind of glaucous gray color of the foliage. And this would, it would just, this would get strangled out so quickly with all those other plants around. But it does look nice together. There's very well with the crest, doesn't it? Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Yep, that's absolutely beautiful. You can say that anytime you throw ranunculus in anything, it's a beautiful plant. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.